Welcome to another episode of Real Talk. My name is Gerald, this is Mario, and we're going to be talking about the critically acclaimed show on Netflix, House of Cards, starring Kevin Spacey. It's a great show, actually, true story. Had never seen it up until about a month ago when uh, my fiance Colleen actually sat me down and we watched it. Hold up, so you're telling me that you watched five seasons in a month? Yeah, bro. What? Yeah. What? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know how we did it, but we did. And it was the most amazing wow. show ever. Um, honestly, I'm going on record saying that. You are spacey out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I'm going to go on record and say it was one of the best shows I've ever seen because, and it's like you're watching this and you're like, you, you start to sit and ask yourself, how much is this is real? How much of this is like inspired by like what actually happened? Yeah. Because I think it, you know, there's there's some truth. You you just don't automatically think this is how shitty and weird the government really is. There definitely is a, a lot, lot of truth. Yeah. Yeah. Come on, let's be honest here. Yeah, yeah. I definitely. mean, of course, you know, one of the greatest aspects of the show is filmed primarily in Baltimore. <laughs> mm -hmm. So that was awesome. But I mean, yeah, I mean, it was a really good show. I mean, you, you got Kevin Spacey playing a congressman who was the majority whip. Um, he started out, you know, in that position and essentially killed his way to the top. Yeah, so actually, yeah. before we continue, spoiler alert. If you haven't seen the series, stop it. Stop this channel, you know, this episode right now and go watch it on Netflix. Yeah, that spoiler alert was a little late. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. Yeah. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's character development for him. It's no. more like dissension into no. straight evil. <laughs> if you can't be impressed by him... Just, I mean, literally, it's like every situation, virtually dodging impeachment, dodging com uh, criminal conviction, right. you know? I mean, he literally has killed him way, his way out of every single yes. hole he's been found in. Yes. Although Frank Underwood is a monster, I have, <laughs> to, I have to commend his determination and pure ruthlessness. Oh, yeah. Yeah, the amount of effort that he puts into just... Staying above water in the fifth season is yeah. very impressive, to say the least. I mean, but in the first season, of course, you know, you have the ongoing, you know, Zoe and Frank kind of, like, relationship. Uh -huh. Zoe starts out as this, like, small-time reporter, and, you know, she a chance, you know, encounter with, you know, a congressman changed her life. Of course, right. at the end, ended it. <laughs> True. But, um... You know, I just loved, like, just really the characters. The characters are one of my favorite parts. I really fell in love with Peter Russo. I love that character, man. I was like, he was from the streets and worked his way up, only to get caught up in the system at the end of the day. Yeah. And, I mean, yeah, he had his own demons that he fought with, but he had a good heart. He yeah. had good intentions, and he had the capacity to, you know, be a governor even more than that. Yeah. Um, but... You know, he got caught him in the wrong place, wrong Essentially, time. he just didn't work out to the plans of, uh, you know, Kevin yeah. Spacey's character. Yeah. <laughs> he wouldn't bend, Frank Underwood, yeah. He wouldn't bend the way that Frank wanted him yeah. to bend. He didn't want to. But, you know, and then, of course, you have Claire, who, from the beginning, you realize... Claire, in the beginning, when I was watching the first few episodes, I was like, okay, she's the good wife, you know, she works in her... Ooh. You know, <laughs> non-profit. She lets Frank do virtually whatever, whenever. And then eventually you realize, no, she has an underlying yeah, plan. She's just as scary as Frank. Just as <laughs> scary, if not scarier, because right. she wears that same, for Don't lack of a better call. word, resting bitch face the whole series. You don't know how she feels. She doesn't let you know. Poker face the only over one that, 9, yeah, <laughs> The only one that probably knew how she really felt was Tom. Of course, you find out in season five. But, I mean, literally a ruthless, just straight ruthless female. Of course, Beyonce hates her. Most people should hate her. Because she's, she's I think she's worse than Frank, honestly. There's yeah, no way in the world you're going to be living in the White House with me. And you got some other man in your room. Screw that. Yeah, I hate her. <laughs> I really do. Yeah. And I mean, it's not that um, 
I hate the person playing her because she does a very no, yeah, good job. Yeah, the of, actress of, is great. Yeah, yeah, yeah I commend her <laughs> to on embody that, that character. Yeah, I mean, that's exactly. that's nothing slight of uh, of amazing. Right. Of course, next on you know list of people that you know I want to talk about Doug Stamper. I mean, you literally that boy weird. <laughs> he's weird, but you you literally are just like. This is the sad puppy, and you're just like, he just keeps getting kicked and kicked and coming back for more. I know. I mean, it, and you, it's literally the... It kind of makes you think, though, like, what kind of dirt does Frank have on him? Not even just, just that. I think it was like he or, said. He said multiple times, I gave you these chances, you know, of course, uh-huh. Doug, you can find out Doug's a serious alcoholic. Yeah. <laughs> and I think there was a point in which, you know, Doug probably got into a hard time, and Frank, you know, looked out for him. True. But of course, then he becomes like this henchman almost. Right. Does all the dirty work, man. Right. And he's loyal to a fault. Yeah, loyal to a fault. And you saw that. I mean, killing Rachel. I mean, that was literally. Well, it wasn't. Rachel wasn't supposed to be that involved with him. Of course, Rachel was supposed yeah. to be taken care of seasons ago. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's true. But, you know, I mean, I think for, you know, though it was a sad ending. I mean, taking taking the fall at the end. But I think it was more or less, honestly, coming from him, pretty much atoning for his own sins of killing Rachel. Yeah. I think that's what it was. It wasn't, oh, I want to help the president, you know, cover his ass for killing Zoe in the subway. No, it was simply probably to atone for his own. Yeah. And that was, that was the, that was just, the yeah. hard, that was hard to While watch. you're on the subject of Rachel and everything, um, you know, the investigation that was going on mm-hmm. in season five, one of the characters that I really could do without was that uh, reporter for the Washington Herald. Mm. Yeah. Are you his, I oh, didn't yeah. like his character at all. Yeah, I mean, I can't remember, I'm trying to remember his name, but I mean, yeah, he's a, he kind of worked his way a, up he, from what, a fashion column? How'd to, he go from unemployed to working for the White House in like yeah. a week? Come yeah. on, son, really? And he was annoying as hell. <laughs> I liked him only because he was just a thorn in Seth's side. I hated Seth. I just yeah. felt like Seth was trying to come in and kind of maneuver his way into this, like, the triage of Claire, Frank, and Doug, and right. it just didn't work for him. And then you had but his new But the thing is, guy. Seth was kept in the dark when it came to a lot of the shady stuff that they were doing. Seth was, but at the end of the day... He was after his own gain and tried shutting Doug down. He tried taking him down. And I mean, yeah. Right. Another character was interesting, Remy. Remy yeah. just started off as like this corporate ghost that would just pop in every now and then be like, don't forget, we gave you money. And then all of a sudden you find that he's like an aide to the president. Right. And then I'm like, what? <laughs> like, when did he get this job? <laughs> right. No, but Remy was pretty, pretty mm-hmm. determined also. He didn't have... Mm-hmm that psychotic desire that yeah. Frank did, but he was just as determined as I, he yeah. was. I think something just as beautiful as the characters, and there's so many characters in this story, but something just as beautiful as the character is this the, the setting. Pretty mm-hmm. much where they film. And, of course, we're a Maryland channel. We're, we're all Maryland natives mm-hmm. on this. They film primarily in Baltimore. I, I can't tell you how many times we're watching it mm-hmm. and Shout out like, Shop. Yeah, there's yeah. Bun Shop. <laughs> then there's the Engineers Club where um my uh, fiance's brother actually had his wedding reception at a beautiful facility. And of course we're watching and I remember actually being in that stairwell. Like, wow, that's so cool. They're also in the square in Fells Point. True. You know, they met Remy met a lot with Seth actually there. And it was just so cool. It kind of like of course I'm watching this, I'm thinking in my head, I'm like, wow, there's so many people. I have no idea this is in D.C. This is Baltimore. <laughs> True. But, I mean, it was just so good. Like, the settings were so just real, you know. And, of course, being from Maryland, I could, like, you know, they're talking about, oh, this is 10, mile, 10 minutes north of, like, I think, Baltimore at one point where uh, Rachel went and met with the Christian, like, fellowship mm-hmm. church. That was in Joppa, Maryland. True. They actually, I think, filmed that. I think it was, like, Falston High or something like that. Nice. I can't remember. But yeah, like, I'm like, dude, I know, I actually know a kid that went to Boston. Yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, it helps you appreciate when you see yeah. something on the screen. You're like, hey, I've been there. I know that place. Yeah. And I mean, I give it an A plus for setting. I mean, yeah. but then it's like, you're watching it and, you know, like I said, I just watched one through five in like a month. And so like, it's all very fresh to me, but it's like, I'm sitting here and it's like, 
even in season four, like we're watching through season four, and I'm like, where does this go? Like, what happens when he gets to prison? Because obviously, the bloodline of the show is Frank's like pushed to the top. So it's right. like, where does he go? Mm-hmm. And then you start listening and you start realizing in his mind, he's like, no, I want Claire to be president eventually. I'll be president in his mind. He's like, I'll be president for four more years after this. But then Claire's got eight more years. And then by law, God forbid, he probably wouldn't be alive. But by law, he could run again in eight years. <laughs> Yeah, that's true. And I, I think, don't think it's gonna get to that point. Honestly. Yeah, I, I don't. At yeah. that point, it's like, all right, it's time to end the show. Yeah, <laughs> no to the tit, you know, to the title. Mm-hmm. That house of cards is gonna come falling it's, down. It's man. coming. It's coming crashing down. Even yeah. in the last few episodes. And I, and I wonder if uh, Kathy Durant will come back in the next season to testify against. Them. I don't. She she's not dead. Well, yeah. I mean, it was kind of. I'm not gonna lie. I'm. I'm going to hell for this one, but that was funny. That was a funny <laughs> that scene. Of course, he waited until he was out of camera view. I'm yeah. saying, oh, well, <laughs> fall. I mean, the funny thing down was, the stairs. He was like, you're going to have to take a fall for this one. <laughs> he was not kidding. <laughs> but, I mean, I was really surprised. Well, not really surprised because I kind of saw it coming just because of the brief of Claire. But the fact she didn't pardon him in the last episode. Yeah. She didn't give him the pardon. And yeah. I'm yeah. waiting for it. And second, she's, second, she's, second. She's no. taking, um, what's that lady? Jane Davis? Mm-hmm. She's taking her advice, essentially. Well, Jane Davis creeps me out. I mean, yeah. she's a shadowy figure that works for everyone and anyone. Yeah. Knows, like, ten different languages. I'm sorry. Jane Davis, she is evil. And I think yeah. she's continuing to direct this evil of Claire. And it's going to be interesting next season how that goes. Yeah. Yeah. Of course, uh. I mean, this season, season five was a really interesting season. Of course, you have the rich people in the woods and they're having their, like, prayers to whatever deity or whatever. Yeah. That was creepy. But it's based on real things. It had a really creepy, like, get out vibe. Yeah. (laughs) Definitely. Yeah. I haven't seen that yet, though. What? Really? Long story. I'll tell you later. (laughs) But, yeah, man, like, I, I think, honestly, if I have to rate this show... Definitely one of the best non-sci-fi shows I've ever seen. Because, of course, I honestly think The Expanse is one of the best shows, which I will be reviewing in the next few weeks. But I think it's probably one of the best non-sci-fi shows I've ever seen. It just had everything. Character development, plot, setting. It just had everything. I would honestly give it a 5 out of 5. Damn. Yeah. Hands down. I I didn't expect myself to like it so much. Uh Uh-huh. And, of course, I had Colleen just keep telling me, like, yeah. oh, you should watch it. You should watch it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like, oh, this is a show you got to watch. Of course, she's talking about watching it at the gym and watching it at home. And I'm like, oh, what are you doing? Oh, I'm watching House of Cards. I'm like, oh, okay. And this is, of course, like years, you know, years, in the least yeah. few years. But she sat me down, watched it, instant hit. Yeah. No, I commend the amount of effort that they put into the settings, like mm-hmm. you said, the character development. You know, just the details that go into the goings yeah. on of how the government functions and yeah. the amount of backstabbing oh, yeah. <laughs> of shady deals, everything going on. Um, overall, I would give it probably like a 4.5. Mm-hmm. Season 5 got a little too crazy for me, though. Season like, 5 got I, crazy. It just got to the point, awesome. like, really? Like, mm-hmm. this just keeps on getting crazier and crazier. And no one's the wiser that Frank is just this monster in the middle of everything. Well, I think it's like, I don't think it's the fact they didn't know. I think they did know. It's just that they didn't know how to take him down. Right. <laughs> that wasn't yeah. the fact they didn't know. No, yeah. they knew. Whole time. Right. Uh, but for season five, I would probably give it like a 4.1. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Overall, I would give it like a 4.5. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> Great series. Yeah, I mean, definitely worth it. Yeah. Definitely worth it. Uh, it's definitely going to be something I end up rewatching within in a year, probably yeah. to get ready for whenever season six comes out, right. which I'm I'm interested to see how it happens. Yeah. Not as confident because, again, it seems like they're probably moving towards Claire being the lead. Because if you remember the last episode, she's like, now it's my turn. She looks in the camera, breaks True. the fourth wall. As Frank had done so long. True. She had broken the fourth wall a couple she times did. before. And, of course... Colleen's favorite scene was when they were in the, um, that like room and they're having a meeting and of course he's like he's talking and she starts replying to him. Do you remember that episode? 
Like they're yeah. having a meeting. When it's, was this? They're around that big round table. Was this like one of the this earlier is season seasons? five? This okay. is like this is like a few episodes ago, mm-hmm. and like he was just talking and like he's like I have like sh- or something like I have her to thank or something like that, and oh, she yeah. starts talking. Mm-hmm. He's like what? <laughs> yeah, you can. But she me. had broken the fourth wall a couple of times yeah. previous. To that. She had. Yeah. But that last episode was just like now it's my turn. I was like oh god. Pray for us all. Okay. But again, great show on Netflix. Yes, check it um, out. Check it out, please do, because I think hands down, House Cuts is one of the best shows. So don't forget to like and subscribe below. Let us know what you think, and let us know what shows or movies you would like us to review. Absolutely. Yeah. I like again, watching movies. I'm listening to music. Yeah, exactly. I need some suggestions. Don't worry, guys. Take care.